Wake Up and Live with the Arts. I'm Sue Johnson, your host for today, along with James McGilbray, our videographer, and Lester Bryan, our editor, who is in the studio right now. So today we are excited to welcome to the Rainey Institute uh, as our guest, Christopher or Chris Johnston. Many of you uh, Cleveland area folks know him as being uh, an actor, a playwright, a director around the Cleveland area. And now Chris has a new, well I think it's a new venture, called Shattering Science. Si Shattering Silences, that's a good one. <laughs> Shattering Silences. And we're going to talk to him, to Chris, about his book because the topic is so crucial and so needed in our today's society. I almost used an adjective I shouldn't have used. So welcome, Chris, to sure. this show. And uh, we're going to talk mostly about shattering silence. Has. So, Chris. How did it come to pass that you decided to write a book on this much needed topic to bring about more awareness and problem solving and things that would help in our crazy world and society today? So how did that happen? What was the genesis? Um, a good friend of mine here in Cleveland, Robert Sperna, is a journalist and he has a specialty area in uh, kind of a crime beat that he likes to cover. And he asked me to co-author a book with him about the Anthony Solo case oh, yeah. oh, back yes. in uh, when he was arrested in uh, October of 2009. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been about 10, almost about well, 10 years next year. And, and let's uh, stop just long enough to explain what the Sowell case was all about. Sure. Because that was one of the more unbelievable stories. So tell us a little bit about what that was. Uh, well, he was a, a serial rapist and murderer who was arrested in October of 2009, and they found 11 bodies buried in his backyard and in his house. Primarily female bodies. Yes, all who, females, yes. Who uh, uh, were known, uh, say, street workers? Yes. And, and, yeah. yeah, they had mental illness, they were homeless, uh, addiction, you know, they were struggling and, and disenfranchised and uh, lost. So uh, my friend was and ended up writing a book called House of Horrors about the case mm -hmm. and uh, I got involved and we did a lot of interviews with people and along the way I started to meet the people, the police, sex crimes guys, the rape crisis center, um, sexual assault nurse examiners who were providing solutions and that was really more of interest to me than the crime and the criminal. Okay. So he went on to write that book and I started to explore this and it took me several years to figure out what the book was. but. That's, that's how this came about. The writing process took several years. Do you remember approximately how long off and on you were working on the project? Well, actually, I didn't even write anything for several years. It was all reporting and interviewing, and I traveled the country and spoke to people in other cities. Uh, Cleveland, because of that case, it was very much a catalyst for Cleveland to turn around and become now considered a leader in the dealing with sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were partnered with Detroit and Memphis, so I went to Detroit to a national conference and Portland and was all over the place uh, interviewing people. So Cleveland is the main section, the first section of the board, but it does incorporate these other cities that are part of this national movement. Okay, and can you give us uh, a hint about oh, one of the folks you interviewed or a topic? Sure. Or um, what I tried to do to make it more readable, because it can be a challenging subject, but I think this book is about the solutions, so it's oh, a little more positive, you. yeah. Uh, but I tried to make every chapter a profile of someone working in the field, mm -hmm. such as Sandra Miller or Kirsty Muncy at uh, the Rape Crisis Center, and talk about what they do every day, but also how they work with everyone else in Cleveland or with people across the country. Okay, uh, now the subtitle is Strategies to Prevent Sexual Assault, Heal Survivors, and Bring Assailants to Justice. That's a lot to be working on and to be concerned about. Yes. So, what, for example, what would be a good strategy to avoid uh, sexual assault if possible? Well, a lot of it is, uh, this. the book is focused primarily on law enforcement in terms of that, mm -hmm. uh, because for so long the assailants, uh, the serial rapists especially, 
have just gotten away with this and, and continue to assault people. So now there's a much more aggressive approach. You saw part of it in the backlog, kit testing, rape kit testing. Well, let me interrupt. Have they finally caught up with the backlog of rape kit They're, testings in Ohio? Uh, well, I can, I can only speak for Cuyahoga County. They're very, okay. very close. I think they have a couple more years. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is much farther along. And, and uh, but Cuyahoga County has actually been the most successful in uh, their, their hit rate of matching DNA to the offenders and also in their conviction rate of putting these guys away. So we have a great success story right here in Cleveland. Great. Now one of the things that uh, bothers me as I watch all of my various crime dramas it is the, uh, it is the, what is the expression I'm looking for? The thing that has expired, the, you know, where you have oh, the, uh, statute of limitations. Thank you, darling. Sure. I have prejudice <laughs> on the brain right yeah. now. Yeah, the statute. Uh, it seemed to be very low, like five or seven years. No, it's actually, well, Clinton, uh, Ohio just raised theirs, I believe it's now 25 years. Thank but, God. But yeah, some Thank of them are heavens. 20. It just depends on the jurisdiction. And but the at least it's more than that five or seven. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah especially if, if it's a child, they're not going to prosecute when they're five years old. Mm -hmm. So they try to at least give them some time. But there are states, New York is pressing very hard to eliminate the statutes altogether of limitations. Like yeah. murder with it. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's such a serious crime that hurts someone for the rest of their lives. And they're also, they've, what they've, what, some of the things they've done is they can now indict DNA so that they can get around the statute of limitations. They might not have the person's name, but they can indict their DNA profile. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, and yeah. that's a way to get around that. And then whenever that person is caught, then they've already been indicted before wow. the limitation. Now that's impressive. Yes. Now, how does someone order this book or get this book? You no, know, I ask people to order it from their favorite bookstore because then that bookstore becomes familiar with it. But yes. you can get it on Amazon. You can get it through Skyhorse Publishing. Skyhorse Publishing? I yes. haven't heard of that one. It's the okay. largest independent publisher in okay. New York. Gotcha. Well, we'll have to talk after the show. Or James, you and I will have to talk after the show. Okay, now, in terms of your uh, penning, books such as this. Do you have another one in the works? Yes, I'm, I'm actually writing a biography of, of, of a Special Forces Green Beret who served in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and was hurt very, very seriously, also in 2009, uh, coincidentally. And uh, spent, his family helped him, his teammates, his uh, guys on the Green Berets team that he was on. Everyone kind of helped him recover, mm -hmm. and now he's at a point where he's in better shape than he was before he got hurt Good. from CrossFit training and everything. But he's also helping veterans uh, train and become physically fit if they were hurt. Wounded warriors, he works with that program, and also helping them start a business or find a job or just recover their lives after being hurt. Rather comprehensive yes. in terms of helping. Yes. Uh, it has, that's another thing that has bothered me is the, well, I know it's getting better now, but the lack of follow-up and providing essential services to veterans. Yes. And uh, I think it was, I think the Vietnam War turned too many guys crazy. And they've been walking around with, how was that now, 40 years, 30 something? Yeah, 50, I think, okay. depending on when they were serving. Right, but um, I think that now there are, um, that there is more attention being paid to helping these guys um, be able to function and yes, live in yes. society and get some emotional, mental health yeah. together. Well, there's actually, I found, uh, again, coincidentally, there's quite a bit of crossover because uh, people who've suffered assaults can also suffer PTSD. Oh, yes. And so they're using some of the treatments and um, different approaches to help victims of sexual assaults the same way they treat veterans and help them. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a bit of crossover. In your work, in your research, did you find, and I don't know the answer, did you find that there were, uh, what should I say, more types of sexual assault or uh, abuse in, the, say, the family, fathers? Uh, yes. How does that work? Well, they actually, everyone kind of thinks of the you know, a stranger in the bushes, but the majority of assaults are committed by someone that the victim knows. Mm -hmm. So it could be family, it could be a co-worker, it could be a friend, a neighbor, 
Um, so that's there's quite a high incidence of that, and as well as uh, child sexual abuse that comes from a family member. Now I'm depressed, <laughs> but encouraged that. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, I try to focus on the positives, and these mm -hmm. are all. This is their job. This is what they do every day. And the main thing, the main shift that has happened is uh, they take a much more compassionate approach that's known as victim-centered, trauma-informed, where the victim becomes the center as opposed to getting shoved off to the side or blame. And they're also, the law enforcement is taking a more aggressive approach and going after offenders. So that was kind of the radical shift. Uh, Joe Biden passed the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative in uh, 2015 that provides that's provided over $100 million to 30-some jurisdictions oh, throughout the that's, country. That's marvelous. Yeah, so there's, and they're all helping each other. That was an impressive thing that I found. It wasn't just random, isolated cases. They're all working together as mm -hmm. a team, which is very powerful. And I hope that they have progressed to the point. Uh, I got a lot of things that bother me, I discovered. <laughs> that they're not, you talk about blaming the victim and, you know, for a long, long time. What were the women wearing? Yes. Did they invite the yes. assault because they were wearing what was called, say, sexy or, or something like that? Right. Has that slowed down? Any? Yeah. Well, in, within this movement, yes, very much. In fact, mm -hmm. I have a in Cleveland a case. Uh, the, he's now in a different uh, job, but the the man who was the lieutenant at the time of the sex crimes unit. Uh, changed a number of things and one of them was you could not speak to a victim or nurse or anyone involved with disrespect and if they did it would go on to their record and it would uh, they could be suspended and so uh, he would make them go back and apologize to anyone they had insulted so the nurses at Metro for example the sexual assault nurses told me that that changed that they were no longer asking them what what were you drinking you know mm -hmm. what, why are okay. we at this party what were you wearing so that still happens if, especially the, the first responders need more training to understand not to do that. Mm -hmm. But that shift has, has happened and the enlightened people who are doing these uh, programs now, the victim center programs, that's good to hear that from a, an officer. They, they also have a greater understanding of the neurobiology of trauma. Mm -hmm. For example, they, they didn't understand that when someone was assaulted, there are four hormone, hormones that are released and one of them is an opioid. So that would give them a flat affect and they would feel like they weren't being responsive um, and it was, it was physiological and not because they were not being cooperative. So. Do you know, I just got confirmation from my neurologist. I thought maybe I was weird. Well, that's true too, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I got confirmation that for people who uh, are criminals, who, who uh, perform ugly uh, crimes, be it sexual assault, you know, murder, all that, is, and I was right, their, their brains are different, mm -hmm. especially the frontal lobe. Yes. And I had always been talking about, you know, they're hardwired to be, well, I'm going to use the word crazy. You know, but it, did you do research to find out about, uh, well, you weren't focusing on criminals, I got that. Right. But say the the age ranges of the type of person who would commit you know, uh, it's, um, atrocities? It's really, there are studies that I looked at, although it was not directly part of the book, okay. but it could be anybody. It could be anyone from Anthony Sowell to the President of the United States committing these crimes. So. And do you remember with the Anthony Sowell case, he lived in a neighborhood with families right next door and people never knew right. what he was doing. Yeah. And that went, I forget how many years that went on, yeah. but it was incredible. Um, the, so it could be anywhere, it could be anyone. It's very mm -hmm. difficult to, to pinpoint a specific profile of who does this. Yeah. So. Well, now let's leave that side of your creativity for just a moment. And let's flip over to your theatrical side as we begin to wrap up for today. And tell us, uh, do you have any theatrical, commercial, video, film projects coming up? Well, I'm actually I'm writing a screenplay of Ghosts of War, the play that I wrote about the Vietnam veterans mm -hmm. that I'm working on now. Uh, next fall, next, I believe it's October, November, uh, at Playwrights Local in Waterloo Arts District, they're yes. going to do one of my plays um, 
called Live Bodies for Sale about human trafficking, which kind of came out of this okay. book, and Terrence Spivey is going to direct it. Really? So, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, so Good I think for that's, you too. I know we all work with him, and yes. we know him very well. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to try to make it a community-oriented project to get the word out there, because we have a number of great organizations and uh, law enforcement people working here to fight human trafficking, mm -hmm. so we want to make raise community awareness through the play. I'm going to take just a moment and do a promo for but wake up and lives after studio is doing not quite not the same but along those lines and we are working with one of cleveland's newer playwrights chris is an old hand he's been around 115 <laughs> years but one of our newer playwrights richard asbury and we just finished doing a staged reading of his work called black and blue rhapsody it was marvelously received and it was the, in the nutshell, it was about police and primarily black neighborhood community relations and the problems that were involved there. And it is a play, and with any luck, well not luck, financing, that's the word. Always, yeah, always. <laughs> uh, we'll do a full production in the spring of 2019. So be on the lookout for uh, Wake Up and Live's After Studio presents Richard Asbury's Black and Blue Rhapsody uh, coming off the reading just Saturday as a matter of fact. Uh, the audience was full and we had, Richard likes to do reviews, critic reviews, and as he said on his email, we were all A plus that performance, which I was proud to produce and co-direct for, for that project. So Chris, now, folks, I know we want to get folks into Amazon, bookstores, uh, the, the main big box, big stores. Uh. Yeah, I know Barnes & Noble has it, uh -huh. uh, but I just, I say to people, wherever you like to buy your books, just with cost well, everywhere. Yeah, it, okay. anyone can get it, and, and that, that way it puts it on their radar that the book is out there. Good. So. Now, in the meantime, can you give our audience your if the phone if if you yeah, I'll speak English <laughs> if there's a phone number uh, or if there's an email or website address that you would like people to reach you oh sure for follow up uh, I'd say the, the best would be my website which is www.christopherjohnstonwriter.com that's okay. the best way to reach me www.christopherjohnston at writer right oh. Christopher Johnston, Johnston Writer. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. And that will put you in touch with Chris and, and his work. You can follow me on Twitter at C Chris Wright. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty simple. So. I need simple. Yeah. <laughs> that's the most effective. So. All right, darling. I if you haven't seen you in a minute, no. but I'm glad you had a fun trip which he was telling me about off camera, uh, to, to the coast of Spain and you know, places Morocco, like Morocco, yeah. places like that. So, uh, and you didn't take me with you. Maybe so next time, Maybe sure. next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we want to thank Chris um, and James and, and uh, Lester. And above all, Chris Johnston is making an impact with this, oh, this, I'm going to say, ungodly subject for people. And you know, in the universe, people are the only animals that hurt each other for the sake of hurting each other. Yes. And in the animal kingdom as such, they tend to just kill or maim folk, folk, other animals for food. So um, he is bringing a lot of awareness about this problem and it's important uh, to build a support group and to build strategies or ways to solve assault, sexual assault problems. And true that uh, the focus is primarily on women, but there are men who have been sexually assaulted. Yes. And they have a harder time proving that, but uh, how are they succeeding in, in the, not as rare, but the case of the uh, male victim? Uh, well, they're trying to really get men to come forward, they're less likely to, although right. it's very difficult for anyone who's been assaulted, but mm -hmm. 
Um, trying to get men to come forward because there are support groups. The Cleveland Rape Crisis Center has support for men. Mm -hmm. um, that there are ways that they can heal and get treatment, and that's very important rather than just suffering in silence and feeling shame and guilt when they shouldn't. Of course. Um, so that's that's an important initiative here and in other cities, um, and also working with uh, groups like the LGBTQ community are very, very susceptible and, and vulnerable to assault and to being trafficked, mm -hmm. actually, because often they're homeless or living on the street because their but parents get them out. In many cases. Yes, yeah, yes. so I think that's another area that is starting to get more attention, as well as working with women and, and girls. And, but there's a number of great resources, especially in Cleveland, starting with the Rape Crisis Center, that's it's one of, if not the best in the country. Good. It's really an amazing place. And what you can do, uh, I know that uh, in the Cleveland area, if you want to find out about these resources, dial 211, and then they will begin to direct you to the appropriate agencies, organizations, etc. So I want to take a quick minute again, because I thought I was going to thank Chris, and then I turned around and asked him another question. So uh, we want to really thank him. We are looking forward to uh, his next book and then his theatrical productions. And now he's a screenwriter, too. So t I think the term is a renaissance man, some of everything. I just love to write. Okay. So gotcha. All right. Well, uh, thank you. And we will see you soon at Wake Up and Live with the Arts, and be sure to wake up and live with the arts every day. Chris, we'd like to take a moment to thank Tina Stump, my quote, other daughter, for referring Chris Johnston, the playwright, the author, the screenwriter, all of the things that he has accomplished in a creative way. So we were not aware initially of his shatterings, shattered silences, but now we are in the whole greater Cleveland and beyond area. So thanks, Tina. We love it when folks help us discover great talent.